shut up. I hate everything about you. I'm going to live with my family now. So, just get out of here. Okay, I got it. I immediately call the movers so that I could move out of the house. The movers took all my things into their truck. How come there are no furnitures and appliances in here? Excuse me? Because you were the one who told me to gather all my personal belongings when I move out of here. I only did what I was told, you know. My name is Tony. I am 36 years old and I work at an office. I have been married to my husband, Kyle, for three years. We met at a mixer, which was organized by a friend of mine, out of concern for me who had not had a boyfriend for a long time. One of the guys who was the organizer of the mixer brought Kyle. My husband had graduated from college and started working at a company. He seemed to work diligently and gave me the impression that he was sincere. We then exchanged phone numbers and we began to meet up and go on dates. He was the one who would ask me out on dates, and we grew closer and closer. Soon after, we started to officially go out. From then on, it was just a matter of time. About six months into our relationship, he proposed to me and we were married. We were both in our early 30s, so marriage was in our minds from early on. So, I didn't feel it was too early to get married after only six months of dating. In fact, I was glad that we got married quickly. We greeted each other's parents, had a meeting with both families, and held a wedding ceremony. We also went on a honeymoon overseas, and after returning back to the US, we started living together and began our newlywed life. And our newlywed life was a lot of fun. I ate meals with my husband, whom I adored, every day, and on our days off, we spent time together. These peaceful days made me very happy. However, this doesn't mean that I had no complaints at all. My husband could not do any housework at all, so I had to do all the cooking and cleaning. When work wasn't busy for me, it was fine. But when I was busy working overtime, it was very difficult for me to handle the chores. So, I once asked my husband to do the housework as well. Hey, when I need to do some overtime, could you start prepping for dinner? Huh? I don't know how to prep meals. I've never done it before. Well, I'll teach you how to do it. I said that and tried to teach him how to cut vegetables or grill the meat. My husband learned for the time being, so the next time I had to work late, I asked him to start prepping for dinner. I came home and found out that my husband tried to cut the meat and veggies, but the way he cut the ingredients were just terrible. When I picked up the carrot, it was basically a block of carrot, and it wasn't even cut in half at all. Not knowing what was going on, I asked my husband what he tried to do. I cut up the veggies and meat the way you taught me. But if so, then the veggies and the meat wouldn't be looking like this. When I questioned him further about it, he told me that he cut the veggies and meat with a scissor. Apparently, he got scared of holding a knife, and he thought that cutting the ingredients with a scissor would solve things. I was absolutely mortified to hear that. When I told him that cutting up the ingredients with the knife is better since we won't be able to eat the ingredients as huge blocks like this, he said this. It's your fault for not teaching me better. I'll never cook again. My husband ended up being moody and said so. I thought that was immature of him to give up so quickly, but I figured that if he had never done any housework at all, it couldn't be helped. Then I thought it would be faster if I did it myself, and from then on... I stopped asking my husband to do it. When I decided to do everything myself, I wanted to make the housework easier, and I also started to notice many things about our room. Since we got married, the two of us have been living in the room I originally lived in, but since the room was originally sized for a single person, it felt quite small for the two of us. So I suggested to my husband that we move into a new place. My husband immediately agreed that it was a good idea, and we went to a real estate agency to look at various properties. After looking at various properties, we decided on the one we thought was the one. The rent 
was a little high, $3,000 per month, but we wanted to be comfortable as I would be doing all the housework. The place we were looking at was also close to our work, so we can get home earlier than before. This meant I could spend more time doing the housework. We also got the latest vacuum cleaner, cooking appliances, and so on to make housework much easier. I am able to focus more on my work as well, and my daily life has become much better. My husband seems to be satisfied, living comfortably in the new place. We were living happily, talking more and more, when one day a problem arose. And that all happened with my mother-in-law, Pam. Oh my goodness, this is a very nice place. Isn't it? It's so comfortable living here. My mother-in-law came to visit us as we started living in our new apartment. It was the first time she had been to our apartment, and she was extremely excited. I'm so jealous that you have such a great place to live. My husband's house is getting really old. Oh, you're right. That place has been there for decades, right? Wow! Aren't these the latest appliances? Kyle, you must be working very hard. It's a sign that you're making a lot of money to be able to afford all this stuff. Oh, well, yeah. It's no big deal. I could totally afford this. That was how my husband responded to my mother-in-law's words. But I actually bought the furniture and appliances with my own income. I hate to say this, but my husband's income is quite low compared to me. He seems to work very hard at his job, but he hasn't been able to get a promotion, and his salary hasn't gone up for years. On the other hand, I studied hard and went to a good university, so I was able to get a job at a major well-known company. And my salary is high. And recently, I got a raise, because I am able to work late and achieve good results. So... I make quite a bit of income compared to my husband. But I don't want to brag about my income, so I will forgive my husband for saying a white lie like that. So I didn't point out to my mother-in-law that my husband was lying. However, I had no idea that this would lead to trouble later on. My mother-in-law, perhaps because she liked our place, started coming over to our apartment quite often. This in itself was unsettling and unpleasant, but she also complained about my housework. Tony, don't you think you rely too much on these appliances? This is not what I'd call cooking. My mother-in-law complains that I make all sorts of dishes just by cutting up the ingredients and putting them in the machine with seasonings. You're not putting in much effort into it. Don't you want Kyle to eat something really nice and elaborate? Anyone can make something like this. Using the appliances makes the chores all easy, so that's why it's popular among people, right? My husband doesn't do any housework in the first place, so I have to rely on appliances. He rely on home appliances for cleaning too. My goodness, you're too lazy. You're not qualified for being a good wife. That's how my mother-in-law would blame me as she says those things. Why do I have to be told like that, even though she doesn't know what's going on around here? And my mother-in-law's bullying got worse and worse. In the first place, I was against you getting married to Kyle. You're already in your mid-thirties, aren't you? I originally wanted him to marry a young girl in her twenties and so that they can have kids. With your age, it's probably impossible for you to get pregnant now. And on top of that, I feel sorry for Kyle having a useless lazy wife who doesn't even do any of the housework properly. That's how my mother-in-law would verbally abuse me. Why did she have to say such things? I felt sick every time I saw my mother-in-law. And I once consulted my husband about it. Hey, your mother complains to me every time she comes to visit. Can you make her stop? What? She complains to you? It doesn't look like she's doing that, though. Actually, my mother-in-law doesn't complain to me whenever my husband is around. That's why my husband doesn't notice. I would explain that she said this or that, but my husband didn't trust me because he didn't hear it directly from Pam's mouth. Are you just making up some kind of story? I don't think my mother would say something like that. I'm telling you the truth. Do you think I'd lie about this? 
I don't know what the truth is, but, well, I guess I don't really trust you, Tony. I was speechless. Apparently, in my husband's mind, my mother-in-law deserved more credit than I do. At this point, I pretty much lost all affection for my husband. I wondered if he wouldn't try to protect me when necessary. When he weighed me and my mother-in-law in the balance, he would probably choose my mother-in-law instead of me. Then, my mother-in-law took an unexpected action. On a day off, when my husband and I were at home, my mother-in-law suddenly came over. And she brought a huge luggage with her. What? What's going on? Why did you bring a large luggage with you? Oh, stop making a big deal. Just carry it in. My mother-in-law told me bluntly. But when my husband arrived, she said, Oh, Kyle, sorry for coming out of the blue. As she smiled. Mom, what's wrong? Well, actually, I got into an argument with your father, and I got so mad that I left him. Huh? An argument? Yeah, so I'm sorry, but I need to stay here for a while. My eyes widened when I heard my mother-in-law's statement. Stay here? I absolutely don't want that. Pam, why did you and your husband argue? When I asked her that, she looked annoyed. Don't ask me that. Ask my husband. That man got angry on his own. My mother-in-law would not tell me clearly what had happened. Then my mother-in-law asked my husband for help. Please, Kyle, please help me. My husband tends to be a mama's boy. So when my mother-in-law asks him for his help, he just goes along with it without a doubt. Yeah, sure. Stay here as long as you like. My husband responded without discussing the issue to me. My mother-in-law looked happy and hugged my husband, saying, Oh, thank you, honey. Then, let's have a cup of tea right away. She left her luggage at the entrance and went to the living room with my husband. I had no choice but to carry the heavy luggage into the guest room. When I arrived at the living room, my mother-in-law asked, Is the tea ready yet? I was really annoyed about that because I was the one who carried her luggage for her. I got frustrated and prepared some tea and snacks. Then my mother-in-law spent the rest of the time talking with my husband. I'm getting hungry soon. Tony, could you cook something for us? Oh, but please, don't use that much appliances. I won't allow you to skip cooking like that. That's what my mother-in-law would say. Then my husband said, She's right, it's not good to be lazy. My frustration grew every minute. After that, my mother-in-law continued to annoy me by being selfish in various ways. She was staying at our place for about a week after that, but she never did any housework or put money in the house to pay for her meals. She just came to bully me and made herself at home. She finally went back to her house, and a few days later, my husband said to me, I think mom and dad are getting a divorce after all. What? They're getting a divorce? I had a bad feeling when I heard that, and that premonition came true. Mom is going to live with us in this apartment from now on. When my husband actually said it in words, it literally destroyed me mentally. Ugh, wait a minute. Why are you making such a decision on your own? Did you ever think about me, maybe? That I'd oppose to this? Huh? Why would he oppose to it? To your mother, unlike you, I'm a stranger who isn't related, so it's normal for me to be hesitant about living with your mother, right? Wow, you're horrible. And I can't believe that you're saying that. Huh? I've been thinking for a while that maybe you're the one who hates my mom and that you have a terrible attitude towards her. What? No way. I was surprised when my husband said that to me, and I felt like I had completely lost all affection for my husband. As I was arguing back to him, the doorbell rang. It was my mother-in-law, and she came with her huge luggage again. I thought it was deja vu from the other day. Oh, mom, you came here. Kyle, I look forward to living with you from now on, sweetie. Yeah, likewise, Mom. My husband let my mother-in-law into the house without my permission. Tony, hurry up and carry Mom's luggage. My husband then gave me an order, but I didn't want to listen to him anymore. Why do I have to carry her luggage? Huh? I never agreed to live with your mother. Hey, what are you talking about? My husband looked at me in an annoyed way, and my mother-in-law also looked at me with a disgusted look. You're being arrogant, aren't you? Normally, a wife listens to everything her husband says. 
get on with it and just carry my luggage. That's how my mother-in-law would order me around. I told you, I don't want to. Please carry it by yourself. I said that and returned to the living room. I refuse to be a slave to my mother-in-law and my husband anymore. I don't care if we end up arguing. With that in mind, I came to the living room angrily after the two of them had carried her luggage. Hey, how dare you act like that? You're his wife, but you're being so arrogant. I'm just expressing my opinion. Mother-in-law, you're the one who's being selfish and arrogant, coming into our place without my permission in the first place. Hey, don't be rude to my mother. That's right. Don't you know how to respect your elders? You don't have any attitude that makes me want to actually respect you. Oh, shut up. I hate everything about you. You're worthless, you know that? I'm going to live here with my family. Now get out of here. That's what my mother-in-law said, even though it wasn't her house. And my husband agreed to her. That's right. Get out of here right now. All right, fine. Then I'll leave. I called the movers right away and prepared to move out. It will take me a week to complete the move, so I'll stay here until then. When I told them that, they looked very uncomfortable. My goodness! I wouldn't want to live with someone I don't like for even a week! Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, I've got an idea. I'll get a paid leave next time and we can go on a trip together for a few days. Great, let's do that! Kyle and my mother-in-law looked really excited on their own as they yapped away about the trip, and I just continued packing up my belongings. I immediately went to get the divorce papers and handed them to my husband. Even if it's a little while before I leave, it's okay if we get divorced, right? I said so, and my husband agreed. Then my husband filled them out and I filed the divorce papers. No division of property or anything, right? Yes, that's fine. Well, obviously... I won't give you a penny of Kyle's property. I'm glad my mother-in-law and my husband was so stupid. Oh, and please make sure to collect all of your personal belongings. They're in the way. Okay, I got it. And just as they were on their trip, the movers arrived. The movers carried all my stuff to the truck. It was nice to have all my stuff cleared out of the place in no time. Then I moved into the rented room I had rented for the time being and completed the move. Soon after, I received a phone call from my ex-husband, but the voice was that of my ex-mother-in-law. How come nothing's here at our place? There's no furniture or appliances. My mother-in-law was in a panic. I calmly answered her. Excuse me? You were the one who told me to gather all my personal belongings when I move out of here. I only did what I was told, you know. What do you mean? Those aren't the ones Kyle bought? What are you talking about? There's no way he can afford the latest furniture and appliances with his low income. What? To begin with, even the rent of $3,000 for that room was paid for my salary. N no way. You're lying, aren't you? Kyle was just trying to make himself good in front of you, Pam. Uh, oh no. Is that true, Kyle? My ex-mother-in-law seems to be confirming this to my ex-husband as I heard her voice trembling. And I guess my ex-husband answered her honestly. I heard my ex-mother-in-law's fading voice saying, Oh my goodness! Then my ex-mother-in-law changed her attitude completely and began speaking to me in a nicer voice. Tony, I'm sorry. It's my fault. So please, please come back. Kyle also feels bad for what he did to you as well. Yeah, I'm reflecting back to my own actions. I'm really sorry, Tony. The two of them apologized to me like that, but there was no way I would ever forgive them. Fortunately, we are already divorced, and I have no intention whatsoever of getting back together with you, Kyle. Please, don't call me ever again. As I said that, I hung up the phone and blocked their calls. I then contacted my ex-father-in-law once and found out something. Apparently, my ex-mother-in-law had done very little housework back at their home. He was able to tolerate it because he got used to it, but recently her spending habits became so bad that my ex-father-in-law divorced her before she could even get her hands on his own retirement fund. I was stunned to hear that my ex-mother-in-law, who had always told me that I was slacking off housework, was probably even more so than I was. 
I was so disgusted when I heard that story, and eventually they were kicked out of their apartment because Kyle couldn't pay the rent. Furthermore, during that time, my ex-mother-in-law was spending extravagantly, and she even had to pay back her debts with my ex-husband's small salary. Now my ex-mother-in-law is working part-time, but even with their combined income, they are just barely making ends meet, and the debt is only getting bigger. Well, it's none of my business anymore. They deserve what they got. On the other hand, I was surprisingly comfortable in the rented room I lived in for the time being, and I decided to stay here for a long time. My savings are increasing rapidly, and I am living a fairly stable life. I will continue to save money, and secretly hope to eventually retire early. It was a nice touch to see that Mama's boy get the ending he deserved. It was also a nice touch that Tony's ex-mother-in-law also got what she deserved. It must have been tough for Tony to be pushed around by those two troublesome people. From now on, I hope Tony lives a happy, peaceful life. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. My in-laws often stay at our new house. I say, my parents want to stay with us for three days. Is that okay? Husband. No way. Result. Once a month, my husband's parents come to stay at our house. I want to invite my parents over too. No way. So, his parents are okay, but mine aren't? How selfish can you get? This is my house too. Fed up, I decided to get back at my husband in my own way. My name is Karen, 30 years old. I married Joe five years ago. We have a daughter, Rachel, almost three years old. We brought and moved into our dream house six months ago. Things were going smoothly for our family of three, but... My parents are coming over again from tomorrow. What? Again? They were here last month. That's five months in a row. I complained, but he just shrugged it off. So what? We have a guest room. It's no problem. <laughs> that might be true. But do I have to do all the preparations again? Huh? Of course. You work from home. You're practically a full-time homemaker. A full-time homemaker? Ever since we moved, my in-laws have been staying with us once a month. I wasn't happy about it. Initially, it was my husband's idea to show off our new home to his parents. I didn't mind at first, but... It became a regular thing. They'd stay for at least a week, sometimes almost half a month. The hardest part was the meals. To me, my in-laws were like any other guests. I'd clean the house, day before, and fret over the menu. When I asked my husband for suggestions, he'd just say, Anything's fine. Especially my mother-in-law, She's picky and often leaves food uneaten. If they didn't like the meal, Joe would blame me. It wasn't just about meals. I had to prepare the beds, too. I'd only find out about their visit a couple of days in advance. This had been going on for half a year, and I was at my limit. The next day, as usual, my in-laws arrived. Hello, Ben and Pam. Thanks for having us again. Is our room ready, Karen? Yes, it's all set up. The usual room. Well, I'm tired. I'll take a nap. Then, I'll watch some TV. They did as they pleased upon arrival, making it uncomfortable for me. I felt uneasy even in my own home, so I decided to pick up Rachel a bit early. After preparing dinner, I was about to leave when Pam, who had been watching TV, walked into the kitchen. Karen, you're not making stew for dinner, are you? Yes, I am. What? You're hopeless. I hate stew. 
Uh, really? When I asked about foods you dislike, you didn't mention stew. <laughs> that was years ago. I just didn't think of it then. Ugh, you're really inconsiderate. She made a disgusted face and told me to remake dinner before lying back on the sofa. What's with her? She could have told me earlier. Why does she have to tell me right before it's done? It's such a hassle to cook a separate meal now. But if I don't do as she says, she'll complain to my husband. And then I'll hear it from him. Reluctantly, I went to the supermarket on my way to pick up Rachel, buying ingredients for a special soup just for Pam. Even when Rachel came home, my in-laws didn't fuss over her. They'd snap. Get out of the way. Or, don't bother us. Grandpa, Grandma, read this to me. Oh, uh, Grandpa's busy right now. Grandma's busy too. Go over there. They clearly weren't fond of their granddaughter. They pretended not to notice her, even when she went to them with some books. She gave up trying to interact with them and came to me instead. Mommy, Grandpa and Grandma are scary. Sorry, Rachel. Just hang in there a little longer. And this was just the first day. This was going to continue for another two weeks. I can't take it anymore. Even Rachel is upset. If this keeps up, I'll lose my mind. After my husband came home, I finally let out all my frustrations to him. Joe, could we maybe have your parents stay over just once every six months or so? Huh? Why? Once a month is just too often. I'm the one who has to do all the cooking and prepare for their stay. On top of my job and taking care of Rachel, it's just too much. She's even scared of your parents. I'm at my limit. He made a clearly displeased face and said dismissively, Is that all? Is that all? Do you have any idea how hard this is? I have to take care of Rachel, too. You cook every day. Just make a little extra. And you can take care of Rachel. My parents are tired, you know. What's that supposed to mean? I'm telling you, it's tough dealing with your mom's pickiness. If you think it's so easy, why don't you do all the housework and childcare? Huh? Why should I? I'm the one who works outside the home. Isn't that a wife's job? What? Anyway, my parents look forward to seeing me, so you just need to host them. Rachel will understand, eventually. He nonchalantly said this and went back to his room. Left alone, I barely contained my anger. What was that all about? Why do I have to do everything when his parents stay over? And he acts like it's all my responsibility. Not a maid or a servant. Still irritated, I started preparing breakfast for the next day. Then, my mother called. Hello? Mom, what's up? Karen, is this a good time? She sounded hurried over the phone. A favor? What happened? Actually, our house is leaking and it's going to need major repairs. Could we stay with you for just three days? A leak? That's terrible. Sure, you can stay with us for three days. Really? Thank you. You're a lifesaver. After hanging up, I went to Joe's room to tell him the news. Joe, can I talk to you? What do you want? My parents are going to stay with us from tomorrow. He looked up from his phone, startled. What? Stay over from tomorrow? 
The house is leaking and needs extensive repairs. They just need to stay for three days. I thought it would be fine, since he always has his parents stay for a week. Then he says something unbelievable. Come on, give me a break. It's awkward and cramped. I don't like it. What? What did he just say? Awkward and cramped? The nerve. I've been putting up with this all along. Struggling to find words amid my shock, I managed to reply. Hold on a second. It's okay for your parents to stay, but not mine? You don't need to be formal with my parents. But your parents are too formal for my liking. It's not that my parents are formal. It's that his parents are too lax. Lounging on the sofa all day, watching TV, complaining about the food. That's not normal. Does he not get that? Despite my growing anger, he added fuel to the fire. Anyway, there's no way I can do three days. Find them another place to stay. At that moment, my simmering anger exploded. I tried to remain calm as I spoke. Okay, fine. Then we'll do that. From tomorrow, Rachel and I will also stay somewhere else with my parents. Say what? He looked shocked and asked. You're joking, right? <laughs> joking? You're the one who said to find somewhere else for them to stay. I just meant for your parents. Not for you and Rachel, too. <sighs> Don't make excuses. Just so you know, we won't be coming back for three days. You need to take care of your own meals, baths, and laundry. What? You're kidding. Ignoring my desperately pleading husband, I packed our bags. The next day, I explained everything to my parents and booked rooms for four people in a business hotel. During that time, Joe sent me several texts. I tried heating up a microwave stew and it exploded. What should I do? I turned on the oven, but the meat isn't cooking. Please, come back just to cook. Honestly, I was appalled that he couldn't manage for even one day. He could have just eaten convenience store food, but he was already trying to prove a point. It was almost funny in a way. Of course, I didn't reply to his texts. He should reflect and figure it out himself. Three days later, after seeing my parents off, I returned home with Rachel. I thought I might forgive him, depending on his attitude. As I entered the house saying, I'm back, Joe rushed out from the back of the house, red-faced and yelling. Why didn't you reply to any of my texts? You knew I was struggling, right? Panting heavily, he demanded. Answer me. You knew, didn't you? I knew. I responded defiantly. But I told you, while I was gone, you'd have to handle everything yourself. Quiet. You're my wife. It's your duty to take care of the house. He was yelling, even in front of our daughter. Seeing him like that made everything seem so absurd. Rachel seemed a bit disgusted with him too. Can't you stop? Especially in front of Rachel. This whole thing started because you wouldn't even let my parents stay for three days. What? Why is it my fault? I just didn't want your parents to stay. I never told you to leave. You left on your own. I'm going to tell my mom about this. He stormed out of the room, still furious. I couldn't stay with him any longer. I decided to move back to my parents' house for a while. The next day, after Joe left for work, I went back to my parents' house with Rachel. I left her with them and went to the city hall to get divorce papers. If... Joe wasn't willing to apologize, I was seriously considering divorce. 
He finally realized we were gone and called me at night. Hello, where are you? I calmly replied, at my parents' house. He got even angrier. Your parents' house? What are you doing? What about my dinner? Sorry, but you'll have to make it yourself. Aren't you going to apologize to me for anything? Apologize for what? I have nothing to apologize for. If anything, I have complaints. I thought maybe he'd reflect and apologize. But my faint hope was shattered. So you have no intention of apologizing? Of course not. And my parents are angry at you. They're coming to lecture you tomorrow. Lecture me? You're not taking care of me. A woman should take care of her family. You don't get it, so they'll teach you. <laughs> Laughing, he said, It's your fault. I told him straight out. Fine. Let's get a divorce. What? Divorce? You're joking, right? He let out a pitiful voice, and he sounded flustered, even over the phone. I'm not joking. We can't understand each other. That's why I want a divorce. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, how did it come to this? It's all because you upset me. Why should I have to appease a grown man? We're supposed to be partners. I'm done being a maid to you and your parents. Wait, divorce isn't the answer, Karen. He was panicking, not expecting me to suggest divorce. I've never heard him so flustered. I won't allow a divorce. If we divorce, I'll get the house. Fine, take it. You're paying for it, and now you can live there with your beloved parents. What? Goodbye. No, wait, Karen. I hung up and ignored all his subsequent contacts. I contacted a lawyer to prepare for the divorce. Rachel has seen enough of how they treated me. I'd also been telling my parents everything. All this made the divorce mediation heavily in my favor. If it goes to court, you will be at a significant disadvantage. Having been told this, Joe finally signed the divorce papers after a month of reluctance. Rachel refused to live with them, so we stayed with my parents. I demanded property division, child support, and compensation for emotional distress. The lawyer got us a good deal. Joe struggled to pay as he doesn't really earn much, and eventually had to sell our newly built house. Karen, I was wrong. Please come back. I promise I won't let my parents come over again. I can't imagine living without you and Rachel. He still sends creepy texts, but I ignore them. I plan to block him once all payments are settled. Rachel seems fine, but I sometimes feel guilty about taking her father away. Do you miss Daddy, Rachel? Not at all. I don't like anyone who's mean to Mommy. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. As long as I have you, Mommy, I'm happy. Fortunately, she tells me things like that. I'm sure I made the right choice. I'll lean on my supportive parents a little longer. Now, I want to live a happy life with my daughter. After learning of my pregnancy, my MIL offers good herbal tea. A friend's advice leads to eye-opening hospital results. This herbal tea is great for pregnant women, you know? It was only after I got pregnant that my mother-in-law's attitude towards me changed. Before that, she seemed to look down on me for only having a high school diploma and working in an office job. But now, she often brings me herbal tea. At first, I thought she was happy about my pregnancy. But this tea seems a bit suspicious. Hi, Melon. I've been working in an office job ever since I graduated high school and got a job at a food manufacturer. I chose this company simply because I love to eat. It's a small company. 
and I feel comfortable here, so I've just kind of continued working here. I met my husband Andrew at the gym. I love to eat, but if I keep working a desk job without physical activity, I worry about gaining weight. I don't have any hobbies that involve sports, so I make sure to regularly go to the gym. Andrew is the same. His job in research means he doesn't get much exercise. And he's not into sports, so he goes to the gym too. We started talking after seeing each other several times and hit it off over our favorite artist. We started dating after going to concerts and festivals together. And then we got married two years ago. I never imagined that a high school graduate like me, working in an office job, would end up marrying a researcher from a major company who graduated from a prestigious university. To top it off, his father is the president of a company. Of course, that's not why I married him. It was because we shared common interests, and I found him to be a trustworthy person. He is kind, and helps around the house. Our newlywed life has been full of happiness. And now, we're pregnant. It might seem like everything's been smooth sailing, but there was actually one problem. Andrew's mother. She's a herbalist. Andrew's family home, where his father runs the company, is so big, it seems too much for a family of three. His mother grows herbs on the property, converted a detached building into a shop, and holds herb classes there. She's published a book and is quite well known. Andrew kept his love for live music and festivals a secret from his strict mother, fearing her opposition. So, we couldn't really tell her how we started dating, and had to dodge her questions. It seems she had an ideal type in mind for her son's wife, and I, being a high school graduate with an office job, must have been a disappointment to her. She made it quite clear through her words that she wanted him to eventually take over his father's company, and she constantly implied that I wasn't a good match for her son, especially since he is an only child and I'm the wife of the eldest son, I never felt like I was good enough for her. Despite him being down to earth and fun, I knew from the moment we went to greet her that she didn't think highly of me. But everything changed when she found out I was pregnant. I had severe morning sickness and sometimes had to take time off work. And that's when she would show up, even though she had never come to our house before. As soon as she learned about my pregnancy, she started visiting frequently and always brought her own herbal tea. Please, drink this. It's good herbal tea for pregnant women. With her smiling like that, I had no choice but to accept it. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. And to make matters worse, she'd be like, Since I'm here, let's enjoy it together. I'll show you how to make a delicious cup of herbal tea. Then she'd barge into our house and start preparing the tea right away. You don't have very nice dishes, do you? She'd make such unnecessary remarks while boiling water and preparing the tea. Barbara, I really appreciate it, but I have morning sickness and can't really handle strong scents. Oh, this is a recommended herbal tea for pregnant women. You'll be fine. Just try a little. It will make you feel better. Uh, okay. I forced myself to drink the sweet, aromatic tea despite feeling sick. I know my stomach can't handle it, but I can't say that to her. How is it? Tastes good, right? Uh, yes, it's fine. Next time, I'll bring a herbal tea that's good for morning sickness. 
Oh no, that's not Nesset. But I couldn't refuse. And soon she was back making tea in my kitchen again. If she saw that the last batch of tea leaves was still there. Oh, you still have so much left. I chose these especially for your health. You must drink all of it. Uh, okay. Sorry. I wondered why I was the one apologizing. Her sudden change was creepy. And since she kept bringing more herbal tea, I complained to Andrew. Your mom brought herbal tea again today. She even made it in our kitchen. I can't drink it because of my morning sickness. Oh, that's too bad. It's not your fault, Andrew. Well, it's her first grandchild. Maybe she's just excited and looking forward to it. Do you think she's finally accepted me? I hoped that was the case. But there was actually something terrifying going on. Krista has been my best friend since middle school, and I can talk to her about anything. She had her baby about three months before I found out I was pregnant. So now, she's an experienced mom. I've been feeling a mix of happiness and anxiety since learning about my pregnancy, and I always turn to her for advice. Despite being busy with her baby, she's always there for me. I get it. She would always say and listen to me. So, when she came over with her baby, I decided to serve the herbal tea my mother-in-law gave me. I couldn't finish it myself and was worried about what Barbara would say if I left any. So I thought I'd have Krista help me drink it. But as soon as Krista took a sip, she said, Isn't this too strong? Really? I brewed it just like my mother-in-law showed me. It's too strong. You could choke on this. What herbs are these? Um, I don't know. She gave it to me, saying it was good for pregnant women. The bag of herbs she brought had the names on it, but I never paid attention since I wasn't interested in herbs. Your mother is a herbalist, right? If it's good for pregnant women, I wonder if it's safe during breastfeeding too? Are there herbs you shouldn't drink while breastfeeding? Yes, there are many herbs you shouldn't consume during pregnancy or breastfeeding. Like... She listed several herbs, but I didn't understand any of them. Oh, you're so knowledgeable, Krista. I've always liked tea and herbal tea, so I researched which ones are safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding. What happens if you drink the wrong herbal tea? Well, it can cause uterine contractions or diarrhea, which might affect the baby in the womb. Uterine contractions? Like causing stomach cramps? I'm not sure, but maybe. I've been having stomach cramps lately. What? I thought it was okay since it's tea for pregnant women. Ellen, show me the herbal tea package. Oh, okay. I fetched the bag of herbal tea I had stored in the cupboard and handed it to her. Hmm. It looks like a blend of several herbs. I don't recognize these names. So it's probably unrelated. No, if you're not sure if it's unrelated, you should stop drinking it. Really? You should stop immediately and see a doctor. I should? Pregnancy can bring various complications. It's safer to get checked if something feels off. You think so? Besides, drinking such a strong herbal tea, even if it's safe for pregnancy, might still have an impact. Really? You and your mother-in-law weren't getting along, right? Well, until I got pregnant, I felt like she didn't like me. It's better to be safe and check, just in case. Encouraged by her, I decided to have the herbal tea checked at the hospital. When the doctor saw the package of herbal tea I brought... Oh, these herbs are contraindicated during pregnancy. 
What? I had misunderstood, thinking my mother-in-law had finally accepted me. What was her intention in repeatedly giving me this tea? If it's not good for pregnancy, that means it could pose a risk to the baby in my womb. That implies... What's the story with this herbal tea? Well, I received it as a gift. No offense to the person who gave it to you, but it's better not to drink it for safety's sake. Okay. The person who gave it to you probably didn't know. No, that's not it. The person is a herbalist. It's hard to believe she wouldn't know about the herbs she's handling. She must have done it on purpose. I felt drained. Luckily, the baby was doing fine. The doctor just advised me to rest and avoid exertion if I experienced any cramping. The herbal tea my mother-in-law gave me turned out to be bad for pregnant women. She might have given it to me on purpose. When I told this to Andrew upon returning home, No way. That can't be. At first, he said that, but then... But, knowing her, she might have done it. Why? The baby in my tummy is her grandchild, right? Is she okay with something happening to her grandchild? What if she doesn't want a grandchild? What? Well, it's hard to say, Ellen, but my mother had someone else in mind for me to marry. She's a student in my mom's herb class. She still wants you to marry that woman? She's been telling me to break up with you even after we got married. She wants you to dump me? She probably thinks, if we can't have a child, I'll give up. That's so forceful. Let's go and confront her about it. I don't think she'll confess, though. I have a plan. I have been avoiding my in-law's house due to the constant snide remarks since our marriage. I wasn't thrilled about going, but I trusted Andrew and agreed. On Saturday afternoon, we visited his parents' house for the first time in a long while. We didn't inform them beforehand, so his father looked surprised when he opened the door, but welcomed us warmly. Oh, good to see you. Please, make yourselves comfortable. As for Barbara, she was busy with her herb class. I see, she is teaching a class. When does it end? We're not waiting for the class to end. We'll confront her now. What? It seemed he had planned to come at this time. We crossed the hallway from the main house to the herb shop. The property even had a herb garden. But there were also many potted herbs at the entrance of the shop. When we opened the glass door, we could hear the refined laughter of women. They were surrounded by shelves lined with jars of dried herbs, brewing herbal tea at a long table in the center. None of them seemed to notice us entering as they continued chatting and working. Is it all right if we do this now, Barbara? One of the students asked my mother-in-law. This time we're using a mix of dried flowers and leaves. When the sand in the hourglass runs out, the tea will be ready. Let's pour it into cups. The herbal tea in the heat-resistant glass teapot was much lighter in color than the one she had taught me to make. I spoke up from behind the students. Is that a three-minute hourglass, Barbara? Yes, it is. She began to reply, then realized the question hadn't to come from one of her students. She looked at me, her eyes wide with surprise. Why are you two here? It's class time. You can't just come in like that. I answered with a forced smile. <laughs> the herbal tea you gave me was so delicious. It sparked my interest in herbs. Could I observe your class? What are you saying? Herbs don't suit someone like you. But you gave me herbal tea. That's strange, though. When you taught me, you used more leaves and said to steep them for ten minutes. That's because it was a different type of herb. One of the students, a woman, then spoke up. Are you her daughter-in-law? Yes, I am. Barbara hurriedly interjected. What are you talking about? She's not. 
She's a relative who thinks of me as her mother. She laughed nervously, but the woman Courtney ignored her and looked at me. Daughter-in-law? So you're... I'm the wife in this house, I said it firmly. The woman who had asked me turned pale, and I could see Barbara's face also turning pale. The wife? I didn't know Andrew was married. What's going on, Barbara? Well, um... I had never seen her so flustered. Barbara, didn't you say you would arrange for me to marry Andrew? You promised I'd be the wife of the future company president. No, Courtney, it's not like that. Andrew was deceived by this woman and married her, but I planned to have them separate soon. But this woman stubbornly stayed, and now she's pregnant, throwing off my plans. She rambled on rapidly. What Andrew had said was true. Not only was I not accepted as a wife, but she also intended to drive me out. The woman in front of me seemed more suitable for this family than I was, not just beautiful, but well-dressed, well-bred, and cultured. I'm plain-looking, not very smart, and from an ordinary salaryman family. Maybe I really wasn't suitable for Andrew. Just as I was feeling downhearted, Andrew spoke up. Mom, what are you saying? I have no intention of leaving Ellen. I chose Ellen. She saw me for who I am, not for my education or title. That's the kind of person I want. I felt tears welling up. He continued. Mom, did you endanger our unborn child to make me marry Courtney? What? Andrew, what are you saying? Did you think if the child was gone, I'd give up on Ellen? How could you do such a thing? The students began to murmur. She then defiantly said, Of course, I've always said that Andrew should marry a lady from a good family with education. She's to be the wife of the future company president. Courtney would be perfect. If you had just left her sooner, I wouldn't have had to do anything. It's your fault for clinging to such a boring woman. Don't call my wife boring. She's the most fun. We go out to eat, to concerts, and have the best time. Concerts? How vulgar. I didn't raise you to be like that. Of course you didn't. You're always more concerned about elevating your own status and fame, leaving me neglected. You didn't even know I was into music. That was because I needed money to raise you. We could have managed fine on Dad's income alone. Mom, you only wanted to become famous as a herbalist. Courtney, you're only interested in marrying me if I become the company president, right? Both Barbara and Courtney exclaimed in surprise. I have no intention of taking over Dad's company. What, what do you mean? I raised you to be the president, you ungrateful child. She confronted him angrily, then turned and lunged at me. You seduced Andrew. Get out. I should have never allowed you to marry him. Please stop. The baby. I was shaken violently and instinctively protected my belly. You don't deserve to bear Andrew's child. Get out. As she raged, a voice suddenly intervened. The one who needs to leave is you. Andrew's father had come in, having heard the commotion. I've known about Andrew not wanting to take over the company since before he married Ellen. How could you? He has his own dreams that he wants to pursue. I just wanted him to follow his heart. Without consulting me? You've always done what you wanted, neglecting household and childcare duties. Yet you won't allow Andrew to pursue his interests? But this ruins all my plans. You've reaped what you sowed. She was eventually faced with divorce and had to leave the house. She begged to keep running her herb classes, which was allowed, but after the students witnessed the incident, many quit, and the classes eventually became unsustainable. Courtney no longer interested in Andrew without the prospect of being a company president's wife also left. Barbara now lives in a cheap apartment and struggles with part-time work and household chores, something she's never done before. As for me, I safely gave birth to a beautiful baby boy resembling Andrew. Both Andrew and his father are completely smitten. We decided to live with his father, as we had already been considering moving to a larger place due to our growing family. 
Ironically, I developed a genuine interest in herbs. Using the herbs left in the mother-in-law's garden, I got into cooking and baking during my parenting breaks. I even learned the proper way to brew herbal tea. Used correctly, herbs are beneficial for both mind and body. Once things settle down with the baby, I'm thinking of getting an herbalist certification. Although I can't forgive my mother-in-law's actions, they inadvertently introduced me to a new way of life. My husband told me his mother hates me, but after I gave birth and received a visit from her, we discovered my husband's shocking lies. A cesarean section? It's not meaningful unless you go through the pain of childbirth. My mother-in-law seems to be bad-mouthing me behind my back. Raising a child must be hard. Even the powdered milk she brought came with a smiling face. My husband says it's a form of harassment towards me. But something is off. I feel like my husband is deliberately keeping a distance between me and his mother. How? Why? What's my mother-in-law's real intention? My name is Patricia. I'm 28 years old and became a full-time housewife after getting married. I met my husband Nicholas at a blind date when we were both working. I joined a company in the neighboring state of my hometown. Since Nicholas's and my hometowns were the same, we naturally bonded. He's the kind of person who would immediately reach out to an elderly person in need, even while on a date. I respected him for being kind to me and others without discrimination. When he proposed, I could only see a happy and warm future. I was ecstatic. However, there was one problem. The typical mother-in-law issue. My mother-in-law didn't like that her only son was being taken away from her by me. She never allowed me into their home. Both before and after marriage. Our meetings were always in a restaurant for just about an hour, with only trivial conversations. Sorry, my mom isn't a bad person, but she's a bit sulky. Dad passed away, and she's lonely. When we meet and have meals, she has a soft demeanor and seems like a very nice person. However, my husband says he's given up because there seems to be various things said behind my back. I understand my husband's explanation, but even if she sulks, it's too much. So, during Thanksgiving and New Year, only my husband goes to his parents' house. I spend those times alone at home to avoid causing worry to my parents. I always spent time alone, feeling lonely at home. As time passed, we, as a couple, had a child, a healthy girl named Madeline. Shortly after giving birth, my mother-in-law suddenly visited us. Thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't help during your pregnancy. You had a cesarean section, right? Is it still painful? Don't push yourself too hard. Rely on my son for anything. Huh. I gave birth through a cesarean section due to a breech birth. However, despite my mother-in-law's seemingly polite concern, I felt irritated as my husband had told me she has said it's not meaningful unless you go through the pain of childbirth. Oh, I don't plan to stay long. I brought some things, so I'll leave them here. Saying that, my mother-in-law took out diapers and baby clothes. Also, powdered milk. It makes things easier. My mother-in-law left in a hurry, after about 15 minutes. I was disappointed once again by the extremely short visit, wondering if she had no interest in her grandchild. Still, I was grateful for the powdered milk. My breast milk supply wasn't great, and my daughter was struggling to put on weight. At that time, my daughter seemed hungry, and night crying increased. I was tired, unable to get enough sleep. Maybe I should allow myself to rely on this. While gazing at the can of powdered milk with such thoughts, my husband swiftly took it away. Don't ever use this stuff. What? Why? My husband sighed heavily when I asked him curiously. Oh, mom has old-fashioned thoughts. We absolutely can't allow raising the child with powdered milk. If you use this, people will talk bad about us everywhere. She brought it with ill intentions, my husband said. I dumped the entire contents 
down the kitchen sink. I see. Maybe that's true. I remembered all the bad things my mother-in-law had said about me that my husband had told me, and I was convinced. Such coyness for the sake of meanness. In response to my mother-in-law, I continued breastfeeding, sacrificing sleep. Unfortunately, my daughter's weight started to increase. However, the night crying continued unchanged. My husband's work became busier, and overnight business trips increased. Due to the sleep deprivation from solo parenting, my body and mind were exhausted and worn out. One day, as my daughter was starting to nap, there was a knock at the door. I tensed, thinking she might wake up, but she continued to sleep peacefully. Even though I had intended to take a nap myself, suppressing the feeling of wanting to cry, I opened the front door, only to find my mother-in-law standing there. Worst case scenario. What did she come for? It was the first time she came when my husband wasn't around. Is she going to make sarcastic remarks directly? However, my mother-in-law, upon seeing me, had a surprised expression. You look pale. Go to sleep. I'll watch over Madeline. I was gently pushed towards the bedroom. Uh, are you sure? I wondered if something might happen. Bad thoughts crossed my mind, but I was on the verge of fainting. I collapsed onto the bed in the bedroom and fell into a deep sleep. <laughs> After a while, I heard my daughter's laughter and woke up. Outside the window was pitch black. It seemed like I had slept for about five hours. In a hurry, I went to the living room and my smiling daughter was being held by my mother-in-law. I'm sorry, I slept deeply. It's okay now. Thank you very much. Relieved that nothing had happened, I expressed my gratitude. You seem to have slept well. Madeline is such a good girl. Everything is fine. What about Nicholas today? He won't be back today. He's on a business trip. I see. It seems like my mother-in-law is contemplating something. Patricia, you must be hungry. I brought some food. I'm not sure if it'll suit your taste, but let's eat. I'll use the kitchen. Oh. Coincidentally, my stomach growled loudly. My mother-in-law chuckled and stood up. Oh, it's dirty. As I panicked, my mother-in-law raised her thumb. That's normal. Raising a baby is a significant achievement. Take your time. Thank you. Very much. Caught off guard by this unexpected interaction with my mother-in-law, I was left in bewilderment. Huh? Is this another act of harassment my husband told me about? Is she a hell of an actor? Is she a really nice person? My mind was filled with question marks. Then the two of us sat around the dining table. When Madeline started fussing, my mother-in-law said, It's okay, shh, it's okay. She took Madeline in her arms, allowing me to continue eating. Eating a warm meal slowly like this. When was the last time? And the food was unexpectedly delicious. The words slipped out of my mouth. Upon hearing those words, my mother-in-law showed a relieved expression. I'm glad it suits your taste. I'm sorry for dropping by suddenly. You looked really tired, so I got worried. I hadn't posted anything on the child photo sharing app for about two weeks due to parenting fatigue. My mother-in-law noticed and came over out of concern. No matter how many times I ask Nicholas, he always says, It's okay, you don't need to come. And that you dislike me. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm... She realized she'd slipped up with her words. And I was surprised. Huh? What do you mean? I've never said anything like that. On the contrary, I thought, You didn't like me. We both looked at each other with wide eyes. We had talked so far, and there hadn't been anything unpleasant. Instead, it felt like chatting with my own mother, and I was relaxed. My mother-in-law wasn't the bad person my husband had described. What's going on? This misunderstanding had only one cause. My mother-in-law seemed to realize that, too. Nicholas? At that moment, our daughter started crying, and her voice brought us back to reality. 
Oh, it's late. I have something to do tomorrow, so I'll leave for today. We parted ways today, in confusion. Exchanged phone numbers. On another day, I visited my mother-in-law's house. I'm sorry for inviting you over for the first time. This might be because of my son. He said you didn't want me to come into the house. Huh? My mother-in-law let out a small scream. No, no. I've been telling him to bring you along. When I heard that you didn't want to come, it seems there was a big misunderstanding, thanks to my son. My mother-in-law looked sad as she sighed. My mother-in-law's house was a cute home with a white-based theme, perfectly matching my taste. As she led me into the living room, my eyes were drawn to a book placed in the corner of the room. It was a parenting magazine. My mother-in-law, noticing my reaction, seemed a little embarrassed. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have bought something like this for my grandchild. When I asked, I found out that my mother-in-law had been studying recent childcare trends. So she had a good understanding that using powdered milk was common now. In that magazine's feature story, it said that grandparents shouldn't frequently visit their daughter-in-law's child. It says that even if you go there, it's not a good idea to stay for a long time. Besides, my son told me you hated me. It's taken me a while to realize that. I'm sorry you had to go through so much pain. The apologetic look on my mother-in-law's face made my chest tighten. The hatchet in me disappears as my trust in my mother-in-law grows stronger. My suspicion and distrust of my husband grew stronger and stronger. My son is the only child we conceived after infertility treatment. Maybe I spoiled him too much. As I heard more and more stories, I've learned that he often claimed to be on a business trip, but actually stayed at his parents' house. He's been staying with his mother a lot lately. My mother-in-law sighed. We need to have a serious talk about my son. <sighs> Saying this, she frowned. I had longed for a closer relationship with my husband and resented him for it. Why is all this happening? With suspicions about my husband in my heart, I returned home. On that day, my husband came home as usual. I'm back, and here is a souvenir. He handed me a souvenir from his business trip with a smile. You know, today Madeline did... Oh, sorry. I'm tired. He is a kind husband, but lately things have been like this. Even when I try to talk about our child, he doesn't seem interested. Before, I used to ignore it, saying, Yes, you must be tired. But now, after resolving the misunderstanding with my mother-in-law, suspicions are piling up. Also, about your mother. I want to get along with her. At those words, my usually calm husband glared at me. Mom says she doesn't like you, right? Saying that, he went into the bath. Left alone in the living room, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. What is making you like this? I was at a point in my life when I was struggling to make sense of it all. Then my husband's phone, left on the table, beeped a notification. I usually don't pay attention, but today, I had a bad feeling and checked the screen. Let me know when you come this way again. A message with a heart mark was displayed. I felt dizzy. My husband's phone was easily unlocked with his birthday, and it revealed multiple exchanges with women. He was corresponding with several women, and I looked at their profiles to see what kind of women they might be. I noticed something. First, I took a screenshot of my husband's phone screen with my own phone. All right, time to consult with mom. The following week, my husband said he had a business trip and went to work. I also left the house with my daughter, heading to my mother-in-law's house. Nicholas is supposed to come home in the evening. When I explained the situation to my mother-in-law, she predictably replied, Yes, today's the day my husband is going back to his parents' house for a business trip. Arriving at my mother-in-law's house, I eat the meatball spaghetti she made. Mmm, it's delicious. Please teach me how to make it next time. With my words, my mother-in-law smiled. Of course! Oh, it feels like I've gained a daughter. I'm so happy. The misunderstanding was cleared up, and we became closer and closer as if to make up for all the time we had not spent together. Of course, 
Without telling my husband, my daughter Madeline has become completely attached to her grandmother. She looks so happy to be cuddled. Baby girls have a fluffy and nice mouth, don't they? So cute. Watching my mother-in-law happily holding her granddaughter, I also felt warm. As we were spending that time, I'm home, my husband returned. I was preparing to confront my husband, but both my daughter and I hid in the back room of the living room for now. Welcome back, Nicholas. I'm home, Mom. Coming back to my parents' house is really nice. Unaware that my daughter and I were there, my husband was carefree. You frequently come back to your parents' house. Are Patricia and the child okay? Oh, come on. I came all the way to my parents' house. Don't talk about Patricia. She hates you, Mom, right? She's busy with childcare, but she doesn't do any housework at all. Is that so? Carrying a small baby. Do you think she can do housework properly? Huh? Haven't you been supporting Patricia a lot lately? Stop it, Mom. Listening to the conversation, I trembled that my husband spoke about me like this. I haven't finished work yet. I have a meeting with people from the company, so keep it quiet. Saying that, my husband opened his computer, put on headphones, and started an online meeting. My mother-in-law began washing dishes, and my husband, whether annoyed by the noise or not, entered the room where my daughter and I were. Huh? Seeing me and my daughter, my husband opened his mouth wide. I'll be back in a moment. Saying that, my husband turned off the camera and audio, placing the computer on the nearby table. Why is Patricia here? My husband was surprised. I heard everything. So this is what you've been thinking about me. And you lied to both your mother and me, right? Explain to me what's going on. I quietly said this. My husband sighed. <sighs> I'm a good husband at home, so don't make a fuss. A single mother can take care of me. I thought mom would be happy if I got married and had a child. I didn't like the idea of you and mom getting along well. I didn't want my baby to have my mom all to herself. Huh? Disgusting. I didn't want to know, but there's no mistake. This person is a severe mama's boy. At that moment, how can you say such disgusting things? It gave me goosebumps. I thought you were a kind son, but this is wrong. An angry voice resounded. Turning around, my mother-in-law, with the same expression as me, stood there. Mom, don't say such terrible things. Am I not enough for you, Mom? Aren't I a good son? And why is Patricia here? You've been sneaking around behind my back. My husband pleaded tearfully. I couldn't stop the chills. I have nothing left of this man. I showed her the screenshots of my husband's app that I had taken the other day. You've been doing some pretty lax things behind my back, haven't you? My husband's face turns pale. This is... Explain yourself, Nicholas. My mother-in-law sharply demanded. It's just that mom has been cold lately. My husband started crying. Displayed on the screen was a mature woman my husband had been in contact with on a dating app. The mama's boy, feeling neglected by his own mother, had sought comfort from mature women. It was too disgusting, and I wanted to say goodbye as soon as possible. Mom! Mom! My husband wailed, gradually losing composure. As I began to wonder how to settle the situation, an unbelievable scene caught my eye. Huh? My voice made both my mother-in-law and husband stop. My husband, who should have turned off his computer, was tinkering with it. On the screen, beyond the joyful figure of our daughter, both the video and sound were on. Recently, my daughter had started playing with my computer. Isn't this bad? He's a mama's boy. It's disgusting. The screen was buzzing with activity. Upon checking, it seemed to be my husband's colleagues from the online meeting. His embarrassing actions were now exposed to the entire company. Well done, my daughter. I silently applauded in my mind. My husband hurriedly turned off the computer, but it was already too late. He slumped down on the spot, looking helpless. Prompted by my mother-in-law, I left the prepared divorce agreement on the table and left the house. W wait divorce My husband chased after me, but my father, who had come to pick me up, delivered a silent slap. Without looking back, I got into my father's car. Returning home for the first time in a while, I told my parents everything and rested. 
A few days later, while packing my things at our house, my mother-in-law came to see me with a signed divorce agreement. I'm sorry for letting you marry such a son. It was a short time, but I enjoyed getting along with you. Madeline is so cute. I was happy. Saying this, my mother-in-law gently pinched Madeline's cheek with tears in her eyes. I had a great time, too. I'm glad the misunderstanding was cleared up. And I haven't learned your cooking yet, so can I continue visiting? When I said that, my mother-in-law's face lit up. Is that okay? Of course. I don't want to see Nicholas, but I really love you. And so I continued to have a relationship with my mother-in-law. As for Nicholas, after his outrageous mama's boy behavior became known in the company, he resigned abruptly, seemingly running away. He tried to plead with his mother, but she rejected him instantly. Now he is living on a rural farm in worse conditions than the cows, it seems. As for me, I now call my ex-mother-in-law Miranda, and we have regular interactions. So, what are we making today? How about paella? I love that. Let's make it with plenty of shrimp. Sounds good. Our carefree, joyful conversation echoes through the air.